All right, uh, in this video, I'm going to share with you the experience I had with driving the 60D Model X with the trailer. Because uh, this, this question is uh, something like many people ask, like uh, they, they consider buying a, a 75D or maybe a second-hand 60D because the, the, the 60D uh, is not available anymore uh, as Model X and S. Uh, so um, you know, they they consider a 75, but they're not sure if the 75 will be enough for for maybe hauling some trailers, maybe even a caravan or something. You know, uh, so uh, I can't like give you a good uh, like a clear answer because everything is individual. You know, your driving style, your climate, uh, your charging infrastructure, everything. But at least I will share with you my experience I had with that weekend. So I took that car for uh for um, a long trip long-ish trip uh about 1000 little over 1000 kilometers oslo trondheim and back again many of you guys know that route uh, i also know that route quite well that's why i wanted to test the this car with that route so it's, uh, i know everything in and out with that trip uh so anyway this the the 60 is a software limited 75 pack uh so that means that I mean the, the battery pack is 75 but it's been limited to 60 uh, and that gives it uh, some advantages um, I'll come back to that later uh, but um, that means that you know I measure that uh, it has 58 kilowatt hour available and that's not real some BMS or something that's just an estimate based on uh, how much energy I was able to get out of it and I also measured earlier on the on the model s 75d that the 75d has about 70 kilowatt hour available so the like the, the non-restricted 75 has 12 kilowatt hour more than the, the 60 the restricted one uh, whether you, you know, want to buy a 60 or 75 i guess it depends you know if you can find a 60 available out there a second hand or showroom car or whatever or a 75 if you consider that one yeah but this test was done with the 60. Uh, i measured the weight also it, it was 2,500 kilos. That's um, 100 kilos less than my car, which is about 2,600 kilos. But again, this is also dependent on many other factors, like if you have the sound packet, that weighs some extra. If you have, you know, the seat configuration will weigh extra. So, but it's just to give you an, an idea that, okay, it's slightly lighter than uh, than the heavier uh, car with Okoya. And, and also uh, the performance uh, models, they have a bigger rear motor. Uh, but the weight, like shouldn't matter too much especially if you're carrying a pulling a trailer or something you know the, the total weight difference is not that much uh it's more uh, it's all about drag uh so um on my first leg from oslo via nebenes uh to elverum i stop at nebenes to juice up there because um, um i want to juice up like more often uh, i will make another video where i prove that you know juicing up more often when you're pulling a trailer will save you time will charge faster uh, but i just have to gather gather enough proof first to to show you that uh, but um the distance wasn't that far you know it was like less than 100 kilometers uh, 60 miles between the supercharger and that's really good uh, conditions for for a small battery pack because um, it charged more or less the same as my car my 90 pack because um, at the lower end, you know, you charge fairly fast anyway, and you don't have to charge that much. Uh, and also that stretch was, had very little elevation, elevation change. And I mentioned, you know, that uh, this one is a, uh, a software limited pack. So normally when you have like, you know, an 85 pack or 100 pack or whatever, 90 pack, towards the very end, like close to 100%, you would charge very slow, you know, it would taper off and charge like five kilowatt, two kilowatt um, towards the end. But this one, because it's software limited, uh, the 100% hun here is in reality 85%. So <laughs> like at the very end, you know, it charged at a whooping 35 kilowatt. And that is so fast that you might as well let it charge to that 100% in many, many occasions. I just let it charge to 100% until it stopped. Um, but you know when I like compare the speed okay so I I get the impression that uh, well you know the 60 was uh, more or less the same as my 90 pack but keep in mind that my 90 pack has been restricted due to terminate DC fast charging uh, whereas this one is a fresh one 
So, you know, we don't know yet whether the 60 pack will get some kind of restriction eventually. Uh, so we have to have that in mind that, uh, you know, the difference might be bigger. You know, the, the 90 pack should be, have that edge over the 60, even with a high uh, like supercharger density. So on the next stretch uh, from uh, from Elverum, uh, sorry, from Nebenes to Elverum, I took a detour to uh, Hama to deliver some stuff. And then I went to Elverum and then I had to do a pretty long charge because the distance from the next one, Elverum to Aldal, is somewhat difficult. You have 167 kilometers and you also have elevation, 280 meter elevation. So it's kind of far. And, um, you know, if you look back on uh, the available energy in the car and you try to estimate, uh, you know, uh, based on the consumption and all that, um, the, with the trailer, well, it was my trailer, I would have about 175 kilometers of range. But that was, that is running it down to zero. And it was 167 <laughs> to Aldal. So, you know, I could try to make it without uh, topping up, but I, I wouldn't take that chance. So, um, I had to do a, a 12 minute uh, charleball stop during that trip. Uh, I might have spent a little bit more energy than you know optimal because I did some hammering and overtaking for you guys who don't know. Um, so I got the impression that the 60, well the 60, I'm trying to find some numbers. You know, Tesla, they are hiding some of the horsepower numbers uh, nowadays, but uh, I think it, the, the 60 has about 350 horsepower, whereas the, the P90D Ludicrous everything that has like 570 horsepower or something so a lot more horsepower uh, I felt that um, the 60 was maybe a little bit underpowered and this was only a light trailer you know like 500 kilos trailer with cargo uh, if you pull like a big boat or a caravan uh, it can be kind of sluggish uh, but on the other hand you know uh, it's still like um, Still very good compared to uh, fossil cars. You know, I'm I'm spoiled. I'm used to the ludicrous uh, speed on the Optimus Prime. Yeah. Um, but uh, there's one thing I mentioned the Chalmo stop. Um, I stopped for 12 minutes, and at that location where I stopped, it was very like close close to the supercharger. So that meant that the battery pack was low, and then we have low voltage, and the nominal voltage on the 60 pack uh, 75 you know is lower than on the on the 85 90 100 pack and the chalmo like the how the, that charger works is that um, it's limited on how, like the speed is restricted by how much voltage you have also so the lower voltage the lower speed uh, so that means the 60 pack charges slower than uh, the 85 or 90 and um, it's about, you know, it goes from 35 to 40 kilowatt, whereas on my car it's 40 to 48. Uh, you know, initially that sounds a lot more, you know, uh, the difference, but practically it's about 10% slower. Uh, that has something, something to do with that uh, the 60 pack can sustain the 40 kilowatt for like towards the top, it can do like a flat uh curve towards the end it it charges like at the f maximum all the way to 95 percent at least on the 60 pack on the 75 it will be slightly different because you have a different offset a different range but you, you kind of get my idea huh? so um i arrived with 30 kilometers left <laughs> in Aldal, and that's within the safe uh, safe zone i wouldn't i wouldn't try to push it you know below 15 kilometers that's risky business after what happened earlier and so you shouldn't do that either if you pulling a trailer you know uh, especially if you got to go uphill and you have some uh, headwind and all that uh, but one thing i noticed uh, when i plugged in was that um, uh, it ramped up kind of slow it was like you know the, the power was uh, hovering around zero and going a little bit up and down the weird stuff going going on for like a minute and then it ramped up so uh, uh, other people have reported the same thing uh, so you know you should should try not to discharge it too low and i have also seen this in my car but it seems like uh, it's less susceptible for that you have to go deeper uh, in order to get this like a kind of slow ramp Thing. I heard some people say they have to wait several minutes until they start getting uh, some uh, decent power. Um, but um, anyway, uh, when I arrive in Aldal and I juice up there, then you have a different situation because uh, from Aldal to Klett you have downhill. You have more distance though, 179 kilometers 
versus 167. So longer distance, but you have downhill advantage. Uh, but still, you know, I took no chances, so, uh, so I charged for 20 minutes at the Chadmo. Uh, it turns out that it was too much because uh, once I arrived at the supercharger, uh, I had a whooping 246 watt per kilometer consumption. That is super, super low. What the heck? Uh, but it's a combination of downhill and tailwind and dry road and then slow traffic. So I probably could have achieved the same thing with my car uh, because it seems like during the trip I started getting like an average uh, consumption over the trip and it seems to be more or less the same as my car for some reason. You know, you wouldn't believe that you know the non-performance car, the lighter car would, would uh, consume less but uh, I'm not sure, I have some theories maybe why it is like that. Uh, it could be something to do that the performance, the performance more, they are of course less efficient, but at higher load, they might work in a, like a better, uh, better efficiency uh, like uh, range versus if you have the non-performance more, it, you have to kind of squeeze out more from it, and then it you push it beyond the optimal range. I don't know. It's maybe just like a theory I have, um, but. Um, Again, you know, we are talking about pulling trailers here, not just, you know, driving without trailer. Without Driving without trailer is a different story. Uh, and also that day was, you know, like I mentioned, was dry, but also kind of warm for Norway. It was warm, plus 18 degrees Celsius. So that also contributes to slightly less drag than lower temperature. Uh, so I arrived with whooping f uh, 75 kilometers, you know, I charged way too much. I, I calculate afterwards I couldn't charge for only five minutes and it would be fine but you never know and I wanted to this time I wanted to charge early because if you charge early you will have higher voltage in the battery pack and then you will have more speed and if uh, if you have to pay for the charging it's also a better deal because then you get more bang for the bucks uh, so that's also another thing you have to remember, like try to remember like, you know, if you have to top up try to do it as early as possible um, and then um, I did some deliveries in uh, in Trondheim and back and forth and then I came back to the supercharger and then I prepared my trip back again and then you have the reverse route you know and then you have to drive 179 kilometers which is freaking far and you also have to do that elevation 435 meter elevation um, and uh, uh, as a general rule of thumb uh, um, well okay I did this like estimation that uh, a uh, 100 meter elevation with my setup, with my trailer and weight, would uh, consume 0.8 kilowatt hour extra. Uh, so that means I need uh, three and a half kilowatt hour extra just to go up those hills, and that's about six percent in the 60 pack. And that uh, to make things worse, the temperature drop to eight degrees Celsius. I'm not a scientist. I don't know how much extra drag that cost, but uh, I also had uh, headwind this time. I had to top up on the Chardemon on the way there. I, I stopped at Bikehawk to top up. I I estimated that you know I could I had to do a 35 minute Chardemon stop, but I, I charged 100 percent just because I wanted to test that uh, Chardemon speed towards the end. But uh, 35 minutes of Chardemon like Chardemon top up is pretty pretty long, you know. Uh, so of course if you had a 75D, then you could top up more at the supercharger and then you have to top up less uh, on, on the Chadamo. Uh, so um, here I started to feel like you know the 60 pack was kind of yeah was a little bit like restrictive uh, and this was even in summer and winter it will be even worse. Uh, and one thing I should mention though is that uh, when I charge to 100% and start driving you can see that uh, you have full region. That's like a nice feature about uh, about the the restrict I mean, the, the software limited battery pack because you don't have hundred percent, and that means you can um, you can charge you know the, the battery. But if if you have like the ninety pack, which is a true ninety, then there's no place to store the energy. So that means you will have no region once you start driving. So the, the behavior of the car was changed slightly until you consume more. But on the other hand, because we are pulling trailer, we consume energy quite fast. So it doesn't take that long before you have more or less full regen. Like after only a few minutes, you have close to full regen. But you know, um, 
there will be supercharge in Bairkhok, that place where I, I stopped to charge the Chalmo. Uh, so the Chalmo speed is like about half of the supercharger speed, or sometimes even, you know, less than 40% of the supercharger speed, depends on how far you have to charge it. Um, so I, I'm not gonna like take all the legs in detail, I just pointed out the most important legs of the trip. To summarize the whole experience with the 60D and trailer is that, okay, um, because it is, has a smaller battery pack, it feels a little bit underpowered, but that might not be too big of a deal. Uh, if you live in a place where you don't have to hammer it, then you're fine. You know, you, it, uh, for overtaking, yes, you need extra power, you know, like peak power. But if you just wanna like, like drive, you know, keep the steady speed uphill, it will do it just fine. Yeah, plenty of power for that. Uh, and also, yes, I, I noticed that the energy consumption was more or less the same. You know, it's really hard to measure it unless you do it directly and compare it on the same day and whatever. But I got the impression there and the energy consumption was about the same. Um, and uh, of course, uh, the 60D can do it fine as long as you have massive supercharger coverage. Uh, so yes, if your country has massive coverage, then even a 6075 would be great. If you don't have, then um, you might consider 100D. Uh, now the problem with the 60 pack, because it was limited, was that it, it finished charging so fast. And sometimes almost too fast because, you know, I wanted to eat, I wanted to check my Facebook and whatever, and then and it was done, you know. Uh, so um, I always talk about this, it's always nice to have this buffer where you can, you can uh, like, when you're busy, you juice up more than you need. And then at the next stop, you don't have to wait that long. So the, the, the problem for me was that it finished so fast and then on the next stop, I kind of had to wait for it anyway, and, and yeah, so you, you see. Uh, uh, but you know, the, the channel adapter is priceless. It will compensate for the lack of range. So if you have Chalamo, like if you have Chalamo stations in your country, uh, then you know, it, it will be fine. Yeah, you just have to wait a little bit, but it will be fine. So, you know, uh, the, the 60 and 75 pack cost way less than the 100 pack. So like value for money, uh, if you just want to get there and you don't need like super power, then I would say it's pretty good value for money. Just get that channel mode up there and you can you can do even long trips, occasional long trips, just fine. Um, and of course, if you don't have a trailer, then, you know, that's also fine because the owner here, he drove to Poland, from Norway to Poland with that car, without trailer, of course. So he could do that with a 60, what, what the heck, yeah. Um, but, uh, so, you know, as long as you don't take these uh, trips too often, then it will be fine. I met, uh, like, next weekend, I met another dude with a... Um, I don't remember what he had. I'm not sure if it was a 60 or a 75, but uh, he pulled a trailer, and I didn't ask him directly, but it seemed like he was a little bit tired of that waiting, uh, you know, waiting for charging. So, um, uh, he seems to be one of the guys who pulls trailer a lot. Yeah, so for him, a 100 pack or a 90 pack would probably be better. Uh, but you know, again, um, this is the situation today, and Tesla, they are already announced that they will make a lot of uh, superchargers. They, they, because of Model 3, you know, they're gonna mass, just triple the, the amount of superchargers, and we are already seeing some of that in Norway. Uh, and also, like like I mentioned, you know, Bajkog will get a supercharger, and also when they go to Stavanger, uh, Olgoy will get one. So, you know, like, they will fill up the gaps uh, where, to make it like, to make it better for for uh, traveling with a Tesla, pretty much. So even if today in your country um, the situation, I mean, or the map, or I mean, it can look a little bit troublesome today, uh, you could take a chance and just go for it, you know, and then live. I mean, use the channel adapter for now, and then hopefully in your country also, and you know, in your area, it will improve. It should improve, yeah. Um, but anyway, um, I think that's it for now. Uh, this very short video about the experience, and then I have another video where I, for this, the, the, the following weekend, I got to borrow a 100D, Model X 100D, and that was like a completely different experience. I'll make a separate video about that. But uh, many of you guys also wonder what the heck is going on with the Optimus Prime. Well, you see, I'm now sitting in my. Um, my fourth, well, 
my fourth <laughs> loner was first I had the Kia a Rio, right? Uh, that's fossil car with three cylinders. Uh, and then the day after, I received a Model X which couldn't tow. Yeah, uh, it had tow bar, but it wasn't allowed to tow with it. Uh, so, so I had to swap uh, that one for. Um, I had to borrow uh, my friend's car, the 60D. So that was a good, uh, like a good opportunity to do it. And uh, my friend Pavel, by the way, he's awesome. He lent me the car. I was like, uh, you know, I can pay you money for for the extra kilometers. Others, he was like, I don't know, don't mind. So, yeah. So you know, uh, if this video convinced you into buying a Tesla, then you should consider using his uh, referral link. It's awesome. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to make this video if he didn't lend me the car. Just put it that way. But anyway, back to the story about the loners. So yes. Um, and then after that, that one, I received that 100D. Then I had a 100D for a couple of days, and then Tesla said, "Oh, we need that car back." I'm like, "Okay, whatever." And then they showed up with this car. They drove to my home, and the car I'm sitting in right now is a Tesla Model S P90D ludicrous. It's freaking insane. Why well, it's freaking ludicrous? <laughs> like I tried some launches, and I got sick after a few launches because this car is lighter. It's lighter than uh, I, I checked the weight. It's <laughs> freaking 2,300 kilos. Uh, Optimus Prime is 2,600 kilos. That's a big difference. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. So anyway, I'm rambling a little bit. Sorry, sorry for that. But uh, news about Optimus Prime. I don't know. Lots of people ask me every day. I have this loner right now. Uh, I kind of want to go on my Nimber trips again. Uh, I can't do that because I can't pull a trailer um, and no news from Tesla so maybe tomorrow I will uh, call them and ask them what's up uh, what do you guys uh, have you find found out something uh, you know uh, they haven't told me anything uh, they, they <laughs> what was wrong with Optimus uh, I, I get the impression that they have found this is my gut feeling and they, they I think they found the error and they are probably waiting for uh, replacement parts or whatever yeah, maybe you know, Elon has to fly in with uh, one of his space rockets or something. I don't know, but it, it takes time. Uh, Optimus Prime has been at the service center for almost two weeks now. This is like the longest time I had either Optimus Prime or, or, or um, Millennium Falcon at the service center. Yeah, I think last time the longest was like one week or something. So, yeah, uh, so much for that priority. But I guess I, I think you know, I think I had priority, but the problem is that shipping of that part takes time or something I don't know but yes uh, so that's it about uh, the 60d <laughs> or the 75 uh, you can always I mean yeah from what I told you you can always try to imagine how the 75 would be compared to the 60 you know, or, or the 70 yeah and also you can yeah yeah okay now I'm not gonna that's a different different topic uh, but uh, yeah the, 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 the hundred pack will come later so yes, awesome, right? Awesome. Thank you guys for watching. And uh, of course, as always, if you feel like uh, supporting me, then check out my Patreon link. Uh, even $1 per month will help a lot. Yes, thank you very much. All right.